Hello my friends, this is Post Production Pi and welcome to part two of our Benjamin Von Wong editing adventure here in Photoshop. Actually in part one, if you guys missed it, we got this image from Ben. This is from his Dead Sea shoot and he was good enough to provide us the raw to go through this edit. Now in part one we basically took it into Lightroom. We used the Lightroom 4 preset system to get it to this point and now in part two we're in Photoshop and we're going to do a little bit of retouch work. Now what I'm going to look for is basically what we want to clean up is just a little bit of the flyaways in the hair. I want to do a tiny bit of liquefaction and then I want to do a little bit of adjustment layers and uh, just kind of some tweaks to make it just give it a little more oomph, if you know what I mean. All right, guys, so let's get started. We're going to start first with our liquefaction. So I'm going to zoom in, guys, and uh, don't kill me for this. Please don't kill us in the comments and say, she's beautiful. She didn't need any of that. Look, this image was taken just at a kind of a strange moment where her chin, she doesn't have a double chin, but we can see right here that her skin right below, maybe because of the way she's breathing or swallowing, it looks like it's making her kind of have a double chin in that shot. Look, I'm sure she's going to appreciate it, so we're going to do it. So I'm going to go to my liquify tool, and the key to liquefying is to make it subtle. I'm going to hold down control. We're going to just click and drag, command on a Mac, by the way. Click and drag right on the chin just to kind of zoom into this area, and what we're going to do is just using a small brush, just pull this up a titch just so it kind of cleanly defines that jawline. I'm going to hit OK and you can see how big of a difference that makes. I'm going to hit Control Z or Command Z on a Mac and you can see the before and the after. It's a big difference guys, I'm sure she would like it and so you're going to like it. OK, so there. I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, let's go on to cleaning up the hair. Now I'm going to do a bunch of different ways of cleaning up hair. That way you guys can see kind of the different tools, the different methods behind cleaning up flyaways and which works, which kind of requires additional touch up and just there's pros and cons to each one. So let's get started. Probably the most typical one that people will use is the clone stamp tool. Now the clone stamp tool is great for cleaning up flyaways but it's best when you do it on backgrounds that are basically one solid color like if you're doing it over a seamless white or a seamless black whatever it is in a situation like this where our background is shifting in colors we're gonna have little kind of graduation issues where we're gonna have to tweak with a, a standard healing brush and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how that works so I'm gonna bring down the hardness all the way to zero and then I'm just gonna sample from right above the hair and then we're just going to click and drag right across. Okay, I'm going to go actually sample a little bit higher just so we don't get that. It's actually uh, replicating the hair, and that's what you're seeing a second ago. Okay, we're going to go right across, and it does a pretty good job. But you can see how in these areas of kind of graduation in color, we can definitely see that we've removed something from that area. But that's okay. We'll tweak it in a second. Let's go on to the spot healing brush. Now the spot healing brush, I love using the spot healing brush. It does a good job and in CS6 it's even better than it was before. Now I'm gonna, what I like to do with the spot healing dress, brush is adjust the size, hardness, everything to give it a more randomized effect. So basically what we're doing is we're tweaking the brush size so it's not circular. So it's having this kind of thinner edge to it and then we kind of just, uh, you know, make it angled so that we can follow in a more randomized pattern. I'm going to pull down the hardness to about 25%. Spacing we can increase. And now what we're going to do is just pull it over a certain area, like the hair right here. And you can see it does a pretty good job of basically removing the hair. As long as basically you're selecting your uh, a good selection. Because the results that you get from the spot healing brush with the content wear tool is all going to be about the the selection that you make. The more accurate the selection, the better results will be. But you can still see there's some areas that we have to kind of go over multiple times. Now I'm not going to clean up the flyaways that are basically kind of what I would say part of the her look. Benjamin uh, Ben shot this kind of in a way that gives her this slightly grunge look and that is kind of part of just the overall effect. So we're not going to clean up the flyaways that are like, you know, these ones over here. Well, we'll clean up this one that sticks all the way out, but not these small ones because it kind of takes away from the overall look itself. Now here's another area where you can see basically where that, uh, the spot healing tool kind of didn't do the best job. Um, now our healing brush tool, we're going to do, we're going to clean up all these little artifacts in a second, guys. So don't worry about that. I just want to do it all at one time. 
our hailing brush tool we're going to basically pick we're going to do the same thing we're going to adjust the brush size and shape to kind of randomize it but this time we can sample from an area that's nearby where we're basically trying to fix so we're going to use that sampled area to fix the hair when I get in close and tight like this this is a perfect place to start using the clone tool because we can get in and make fine-tuning adjustments without kind of creating these weird gradation effects in those areas now I'm going to remove this strand right here I'm going to sample from right below it and you'll see once we get to kind of an area that it crosses over we can kind of get effects that we don't want where basically we kind of pull in other strands of hair and stuff into those areas so that is something we don't want this hair right here I want to fix as well so I'm going to just adjust the angle of the brush we're going to drag up from right here and I'm going to pull up on this side we'll do the same thing here kind of adjust this you can see how we get artifacts there's not really one right way of doing this it's really more of just kind of using what you like using the right tool for the right kind of job type thing a lot of its very much preference too so I'm gonna undo that last one just so we don't get too close in actually okay so now what we have to do is just basically do some cleanup so let's do some cleanup what we're gonna do is select our let's do actually our cleanup with the healing brush tool and we're just gonna sample in these different areas where we have kind of the artifacting effects so I'm just gonna sample we're gonna click a few times to kind of gradually adjust out those artifacts okay it doesn't take long but with retouch like this I always say go with the smaller brushes it's gonna take a lot longer but the effect is gonna be much much more subtle and much less noticeable we never want images like this to look as if they've been photoshopped so be kind of selective if your image is probably not ever gonna get printed then you probably don't need to go through nearly as much work if it's gonna be printed but it's gonna be small sized you don't need to go through this much work but if you're gonna say blow it up or you're gonna submit it to a competition then it's really good to know these tools and tricks because they are things that you'll want to do uh, to get those images basically to a point where they're nearly flawless now I'm gonna keep cleaning up this is another strand up here that I don't want I'm just gonna use the standard uh, our sampling healing brush tool and we're just gonna clean up those areas that looks pretty good on that side the rest of these are not really distracting I'm not gonna worry about removing too much of them these aren't distracting that's kinda of part of the look here's another artifact let's clean that up again we're sampling with the uh, we're just using alt or our option on the Mac just clicking and sampling in each area. I just want to sample from an area that's close to where we're healing. Now in this area right here, I want to kind of thin this line out, and we're going to do that with our clone stamp tool set to a very light hardness. So we're going to go down to zero on the hardness, and we're just going to kind of thin out this hair right here so it doesn't look so obvious. I'm not going to remove it completely. I'm going to leave that strand right there, but I'm just thinning it a tiny bit. And we kind of get this nice kind of subtle effect where it's just fading off basically, rather than where it's basically completely disappearing. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing here, just kind of thin it out. Uh, let's see, let's undo that one right there. And what I want to do is actually, let's see, let's thin out the, to the top of this. All right, I'm just thinning it out by using the feathered edge basically to drag over that area. We have a little strand right here that should be connected and so we can connect it just by sampling over this area and kind of pulling it down. So what I'm gonna do is just click really small on this brush, just sample and just drop back in basically where it should be connected. I'll zoom out and it looks fine now. All right, I'm gonna thin out the top of this again Uh, it looks a little strange. If it ever looks a little bit strange, just kind of control undo and get back to where it was. We're going to thin out that one a little bit. We can actually probably remove that one. That one's not a part of the look. It's a little bit distracting. Ah, uh, you know what? Let's clone it out. Or heal it out, rather. I said the wrong word. It's a time-consuming process, you guys, as you can see, but the effect is going to be much more realistic when we're finished. I'm going to thin out just a tiny bit of this edge right up here. I'm going to zoom in, just kind of thin out that spot right there, and just up here as well. All right, this is looking much better. This strand is getting distracting for me, so let's figure out what we're going to do with that guy. I feel like if we remove it completely, it might look a little bit strange. So let's just kind of thin it out so it kind of ends right there, basically. Okay, so we're going to end it right there and then we're going to use our healing brush tool change the angle and we're just going to heal the rest of it out 
feel like it'll give it a little more kind of less distracting look to it. All right. And let's clean up that edge. So in edges like this, what I like to do is turn on my clone stamp tool. We're going to go up on the hardness a bit, and I'm going to zoom in on that edge, and we're just going to clean up this little edge right here. So I'm just going to drag down. So it looks like those strands basically aren't sticking out of anything. And then we're going to just clean it up even a bit more. There we go. All right, so most of the remaining strands, you guys can kind of pick and choose what you want to remove from here on out. This hair on the inside is going to be really tough to retouch, and again, it's kind of part of the look, so I'm not going to worry about that much too much. Um, if you guys find this stuff distracting, I kind of, I'm kind of like in between right now. You might want to remove it just using the same techniques, but we'll leave it for this tutorial because uh, it's not worth spending another five minutes on. So let's go from here, guys, and what we're going to do is zoom all the way out, and now we're going to start with some layer adjustments. So the first thing I want to do, if you guys remember in the last tutorial, I talked about basically I want to have a more ethereal look to it and we have a very surreal type of image right now and so I want to give it a little bit more of that. Now if you guys remember in the last video we kind of talked about my vision for this being a more ethereal kind of look to it. I mean it's a very surreal image to begin with and the way I'm going to get there is I want to first apply a slight glow to the image. So what I'm going to do is with the background layer selected I'm going to jump it to a new layer. Now generally we're always making our adjustments, our retouching and everything like that to new layers. I forgot actually with our retouches and stuff so don't kill me for that but we're gonna name this layer our glow layer so let's just call it glow layer what we're gonna do is go up to filter we're gonna go to blur and we're gonna Gaussian blur and we're gonna apply let's check out the radius actually you know somewhere between 8 and 10 is gonna be good we don't want to go too far because it's not gonna be it's not gonna have enough detail basically to apply a good glow we don't want to go too low because it will basically be too sharp so we're gonna hit OK on that and then what I'm going to do is change the blend mode to overlay because I want it to add a bit of contrast. But from here, we need to pull it down. It's way too strong of an effect right now. So I'm going to keep pulling it down until it's into a range that I kind of like. And around 20 to 25% is a nice subtle effect that has a really good kind of overall effect on the image. So if we check out the before versus the after, we can see it's kind of adding a little bit of contrast. And especially around the uh, kind of dress, it's adding that little bit of glow to it which looks nice so we're gonna leave it right there now from here let's go and make a few adjustments to just some adjustment layers so we're gonna add a curves layer and what I want to do with our curves is just pull up the bottom so basically my my darkest shadows will clip at a certain point so it's gonna kind of fade the image just a tiny bit I'm gonna then pull down the rest of my shadows so I get a little bit of additional contrast we're gonna bring up the midtones so it's not too bright and then I'm going to pull down the highlights just a bit. So I get a kind of a flatter highlight look to the image. I don't want to go too far. I want to keep it right about there. That looks pretty good where it's at. All right, now let's go and add one more curves layer. We're going to add this time a, let's do a, let's see, hue saturation layer. I'm going to do a tiny bit of desaturation to the image and just pull it down a little bit. All right. And that's right about where I want it. Now from here, guys, we're going to save this out. We're going to go back into Lightroom, and we're going to do our final bit of reprocessing. So let's hit Control-Save, and let's go on to the next video.